And now I'd like to request Dr. Shin Fujinaga from Japan to join us here to share his thoughts. I'm going to ask him a quick question first off the record. Okay, this is good news, so I'll share it with you. Yesterday he hit headlines and uh, all of you hit your bags to see if you could find his passport in it and he has found it. So we can't hold him captive here beyond the conference. He will leave. Having said that, let me introduce you to him. He has been here a long, long time. He's a scholarship student from the government of India. He came to India and studied languages at Gujarat University. He completed his MA and PhD in Indian and Chinese philosophy. Uh, he has check the logical value of the Jain theory of multi-phase reality. He presides over the study, a society of Jain studies in Kyoto and has also done cosmology in Jainism. And let's just say that the cosmos was with him and he was not destined to be in uh, a state of dis, uh, you know, a state of uh, despair when he came to speak to you. And that's how his passport was found. And now he's in a completely calm state to share his thoughts with you. So ladies and gentlemen, I present Dr. Fujinaga. I shall say, Konnichiwa. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't start my paper without uh, thanks all of you who kindly tried to find my important document yesterday. Om Arham. <laughs> Uh, today's uh, topic is uh, relevant uh, of Anurata in day-to-day -day life, but I, I just came to know this topic just after I finished my uh, draft. So today I'm going to talk about learning in Jain tradition. And uh, most of you uh, remember that uh, yesterday uh, Acharya Shriji put uh, emphasize on the importance of uh, education. For education, I think, uh, learning is most important. So uh, today I am going to talk about learning in general tradition. Uh, knowledge has occupied a very important place in general doctrine since the beginning of its long history. The final goal being omniscience, the medicant as well as red path Followers are eager to understand the teaching of founder or uh, Tirtankara. Even our scripture referred to method of learning, and in course of time, the giants began to write down the doctrine. Since then, they have maintained the high qualities of transmitting and spreading knowledge by means of scripts and books. In this paper, I will have a look of history of learning in Jainism and explore how Acharya Tulsi and his followers contribute. Some scripture belonging to the earlier Suratam tells us that the Jain had a clear system of learning, a kind of curriculum in terms of present days. Even in the earliest times, Uttara Ajayana, for example, shows the vivid ways of learning required of Jain medicant. According to chapter 29, the scripture, there are 27 ways of exertion in the righteousness and the way of, ex among them, we found eight ways of learning, study, recital, questioning, uh, repetition, pondering, uh, religious discourse, acquisition of sacred knowledge and uh, concentration. The following section of the same chapter explains effects of this way one by one. By study, one destroys the karma which obstructs the right knowledge and by religious discourse, uh, one exerts the creed and acquires the karma which secures a permanent bliss. In, this, in the days of Uttara Ajayana, the Jain must have had no writing tradition but oral one. 
in such circumstances, the clear place uh, emphasis on learning. Of course, this doesn't mean that uh, learning got exclusive importance in ancient Jainism. They also regard the practice as one of the main elements consisting of their religion. Generally speaking, st study and practice are a complementary pair in Jainism. Method or instruments for study are various. We may study through our own experience or perception. The Jain classified scripture into them as the Tathagata Sutra 1, 6, and 9 shows, and they gave the term of Shruta for the me method and knowledge acquired with it. This term originally means something listen because, as mentioned above, the Jain in ancient times used uh, only oral tradition to transmit knowledge. Even today, they seem to think the knowledge can be transmitted mainly through the recitation, uh, reciting and listening. Dating, when the giants started writing down their scripture, still remained unsolved, though the traditionally it is said that in the times of Gupta dynasty, Shvetambar Agamas took the form as they have today. Anyway, the giants have a long history of preserving and transmitting their scriptures through the letter or writing. During this history, they have kept high quality in comparison with other traditions of Indian culture. Jain manuscripts contain less mistakes in transcribing than Hindu or Buddhist ones. One of the reasons for this must be that in Jain tradition, many of transcribers were monks or learned lay followers who had good knowledge enough to understand the contents of the texts they transcribed. Lonkasha in the uh, 15th century represents such a figure as he established a new sect because he became to have doubt about the traditional Jain doctrine in his days through the copying the Agamas as a profession. It would go without saying that even after the adopting the method of writing, the giant continued to learn their own scripture. Moreover, a learned monk, a Gita Arta, or a nun, naturally is regarded as a much advanced one than a learned, I mean, a Gita Arta. In this context, a learning method both to memorize scripture word by word and to understand their content too. The giants have enriched stock of knowledge by means of commentary through the ages. Skara in early days explains what the Agama tells us by composing commentary called Niryukti in verse and second kind of commentaries can be grouped under the term of Basha. These two are written in Prakrit and by various authors. Next, uh, they began to exp expound the uh, commentary as well as original scripture by sub-commentary in Prakrit mixture with Sanskrit. This is Churuni, a group of texts in prose. Only few Churuni have been published so far, though it has great importance in Jain literature. We'll come back to this point afterward. Britti or uh, Vivarana occupies the last part in the history of Jain commentary. They are written in Sanskrit exclusively and mainly in prose. Nowadays, most scholars use these Sanskrit commentaries to understand the meaning of scriptures. These commentaries, as well as Agamas, had been written down on the palm leaf or paper for centuries and duplicated by the giants. They also built and maintained special institute to preserve such manuscript. Even today, we can visit such institute called Bandara, mainly in West India. Among them, the one in Jaisalmer in Rajasthan must be most famous for excellent qualities 
and richness of items of manuscript preserved the, there for centuries. The final aim of this bandar is naturally to provide Jain mendicant with studying their doctrine. So they had long history of learning even before the time of printing. India must have introduced modern printing system by the end of 18th century. We are not sure when the giant adopted the system for the first time. In the middle of uh, 18th century, Western scholars started to publish the some giant texts such as Hema Chandra's dictionary, but it was only at the end of the, the the century, that century, that the giants themselves edited and published their text by modern printing system. Since 1880, Mr. R. D. S. Bahadur had published had published some giant agama in printing in printing form, which gave the Western scholar much opportunity to study giant text. The first half century. The first half of the next century, however, can be called the era of publishing for Jainism. They began to publish texts belonging to them in the term, in form of the series. Many of them had a uh, word Grantamala as a part of title, monographs, dictionaries, or magazines. Number of items are enormous and quality of editing are very high. Publication by the Agam of the Samiti represents the two sides of the Jain activities during this era. They started their activities in uh, 1815 by the publishing Abhashyaka Sutra with commentary, and since then, some 50 texts were published. Even now, uh, nowadays, scholars use these editions in their series are the standard ones. Besides this, we have some series of the same kind, such as Deva uh, Chandra, Lal by Jaina Pustak, Uddarak, Surat, Bombay. As a common feature of them, uh, we can point out that mendic mendicant, mostly monks, uh, and Pandit edited them by utilizing manuscripts preserved in the bandar mentioned above. The first half of the uh, sec, uh, 20th century found publishing, ex, uh, publishing excellent dictionary in India by the Jains. Among them, Payasadda Mahanabo is a Prakrit Hindi dictionary edited by Pandit H.T. Shet and published in 1928, and its second enlarged edition by Bandit Darsk Marbaniya still occupies the highest position in the practice dictionary. Learners of the, the Middle Indic all over the world, even today, consult this whenever they come across any practice word unknown to them. So, Jain mendicant in this period, even not, but even not all, but at least some, were excellent scholars as well as a religious activist. These publications, in the form of book or dictionary, have encouraged mature who want to do research Jainism or those who are eager to grasp it by the reading original text. This trend fundamentally continued even in the next half of the century. With a closer observation, however, we come to realize that there are various aspects in this trend. Some organizations like Agamodea Samiti stopped their energetic activities in early days of this period. To our knowledge, the Bharatiya Janapit is the only one that had its origin its origin in the early times of 20th century, and that is still active in the publishing books of Jainism. On the other hand, after the World War II or independence of India, since 
January founded Institute for Research and Learning, publication of Jain. Of them, we are, will talk about Jain and Vishwa Bharati much intensively afterward. So now, let us explore some other institute or organization. No one will deny that LD Institute of Indology, Ahmedabad, once occupied the highest position in Jain studies all over the world. It has very excellent staff with in intensive of Pandit Dalsk Marbaniya and collected huge number of manuscripts and published various texts mainly concerned with the Jains, Jainism under the title of LD series. They also brought out a magazine which carried many articles with high qualities. As an important publication of Jain texts starting in this, the second half of the last century, we have Jain Agam series from Sri Mahavir Jain Vidya Area, uh, Mumbai. In this series, they have edited and published a uh, critical version of many Jain Agama which scholarly introduction with uh, scholarly introductions and useful appendixes. The first volume in Jain Agama series was published in 1968 and so and so far we have had we have more than 10 volumes including Acharanga, uh, Painna, Bhagavati, Nandi. All of them are regarded as a standard or a edition to be referred to by the scholar of Jain all over the world. Now it's a time to talk about the activity uh, by Acharya Tulsi and his followers. As all of you, you know very well, a center for the activity is Jain Vishwa Bharati Radhanun, established in 1970 under the uh, inspiration of the Acharya Tulsi. It became a university in 1990 and has been promoting values of Jainism through the public publishing and training. Since its early days, this institute has accepted people interested in Jainism all over the world. Even within my little knowledge, more than 10 Japanese and Korean scholars must have visited there to learn Jain texts and a living Jainism. Many of them report their stay at the, at the institute in academic media. Why do scholars of Jainism visit Bishop Bharati or Radhanun? One of the reasons must be the fact there they can learn what Jainism is by observing the life of mendicant and by discussing with them. Even for Indian, it must be difficult to meet and discuss with Jain mendicant for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. In Radhanun, however, even we foreigners can have a chance to do so. I'm sorry to say that I have no experience to visit Radhanun, though Dr. J.R. Bhattacharya, a former professor of Jaina Bishop Bharati, invited me, me so often and so kindly. Even then, they have provided me with academic support through the form of their publication. So far, they have published scriptures, commentaries on them, dictionaries, though we are not sure when they started the activity of editing and publishing the text. The first volume, Canon, seems to have published in 1957, and the last volume appeared in 1989. During these some 30 years, they had edited and published all the 32 canonical texts, and they, the 32 canonical texts that they authenticated. Apart from their high qualities of editing, the this fact that all the texts are edited and published is amazing. When we consider that the Jaina Agama series mentioned above remained un incomplete, they were able to be fulfilled their intention of uh, publishing the whole text because, in my humble opinion, 
They have a well organized group of learning mendicants under the inspiration, uh, inspiration of guidance of uh, Acharya Tulsi. Since uh, 18, sorry, uh, since 1989 onwards, they have continued to edit, publish journal text, uh, and to compile the various kinds of dictionaries, all of which nurtured giant studies all over the world. Among them, let us pick one text, for example. Vyabhara Basha, published in nine, 1996. This text contained original verse written in Prakrit along with variant leading uh, critical notes and various appendixes. Skara working on the Jaina Vinaya regards this as one of standard edition. To conclude, Jaina Vishwabharati established under the inspiration of Acharya Tulsi has become active in the field of Jaina studies as well as as a center of learning and publishing. It is hoped that they will continue the activity and enrich our spiritual world. Thank you very much.